So hi everyone and welcome to uh, this very short video on an introduction to bivariate regression inside of R. So this is going to be the first video that we're going to be having in this series of conducting basic OLS regressions inside of R. So we start first with this basic bivariate regression, uh, just basically knowing how to graph some data and then sort of know how to regress it and interpreting basic regression results. And in the next video, we're going to discuss multiple regression and eventually model diagnostics as we complete this particular module. So we're going to be using two uh, packages for this particular uh, lecture, which is the OLSRR package and the tidyverse package. So these first two commands in line seven and line eight uh, are used to install it. Now, I have it installed on my computer already, but if you don't have it installed in your computer, you just need to run those things and those will install it for you. Then we're going to call these packages for use. Okay? And uh, essentially, uh, that's just the, the library command is going to tell R, okay, I want to load these two packages. Uh, which is our which are OLSRR and the tidyverse package. The next command is essentially going to be loading the data set. So the code for this and the data set will be linked in the description box below. So just check that out if you want to replicate the results. So if you look at the DF option here, I'm just essentially it's not an option. Sorry, uh, I'm naming a data set DF, which stands for data frame. So you can name it anything you want. I'm just calling it DF. And I'm going to read a CSV file, which is uh, the file that contains our data set. So this file.choose here, uh, essentially, it's an option wherein uh, it will force R to open a dialog box for you to select the file and eventually upload it. So if I run this command, a dialog box should appear, which is uh, basically uh, going to ask me to select the file. Well, it's uh, on my desktop. So I'm going to select this one. Okay, so it, it should have a dialog box when you open it. And uh, that should be it. Then this next command head is generally going to produce the first five rows of the data set. So uh, let me just bring this up. Then you have head here. So those are the first five rows of my data set. So note that my data set contains the course grade. Uh, the prerequisite grade, the hours of sleep, and the hours of game. Now, let's give a bit of context. So I did this. Uh, this is actual data from what I've had, although uh, there, uh, the student name and the student number aren't there. Those are just random numbers. Uh, but essentially, what I wanted to uh, sort of prove or sort of see is, uh, while counterintuitive, uh, there's been this sort of uh, rumor, not really a rumor, but this sort of, trend that we've been seeing that generally people who get high grades are actually people who game or do video games or like generally play video games for a long time. So I want to see if there's some sort of correlation between the hours of the hours spent on video games and the course grade, which is like a, a general academic uh, indicator of your academic performance. So generally, you would expect that in the past, the, the theory or the inkling or the a priori expectation was that generally video games are a distraction and these things don't generally increase your grade. They're distractions for a reason. Uh, and in general, you would expect a student who plays more games to generally perform less than those students who do not play as much games. But I think that we're starting to see a shift in that it's either it doesn't matter anymore or in fact, the gaming Thing does help you with your course grade. So I wanted to see that trend in this particular study. So I got data on a course grade. Course grade is, is, is their grade in a particular course that I started to focus on. And then I have your column on the prereq grade. The prereq grade is essentially the grade of their course before they took the course that is reported in the course grade column. So it's a prerequisite grade. Then I also have data on their hours of sleep and their hours of game. For this particular video, we're just going to focus on the course grade and the hours of game. And I think you can sort of expect, and when we get to multiple regression, we're going to include these two columns as well. So that's for the head command. The tail command will give you the last rows of the data set. So from here, you can infer that I have 50 uh, observations inside of my data set. I have 50 students here. 
So let's try and visualize the data first. So to do that, we do we use the ggplot command. So let's try and break down how this command goes, right? So I want to load data from my data set, which I named df. So you recall, this is df. So I'm getting the data from that data set. Then we generate a mapping, which is equal to AES. Our, the, the variable on the x-axis, I want to be the hours of game, which is the number of hours of video games played each day for each student, and y being the course grade, which is from 0 to 4, right? 4 being the highest. Then I want to generate first a, uh, a scatter plot. And to generate a scatter plot, you use the option jump underscore point. And you just run that, and you see this scatter plot. So that's the scatter plot of our data here. Now, Typically, when you visualize data, you'd like to see a line that best fits the data. And that could already tell you a lot about the data. And essentially, it's going to be sort of uh, alluding to the results of our regression later. So if we add the option of like a line of best fit, which is this jump AB line here, that will draw a line of best fit. And we get that line there, that black line there. Now, we see that that line is an upward sloping line with quite a considerable slope, which sort of alludes to the result that we'll see earlier and uh, later in that um, the, uh, the R's of game is positively associated with the course grade, which is contrary to popular belief, isn't it? So let's move on to the regression already. The command to do the regression is OLS underscore regress. And uh, we have here the course grade and then the hours of game. So we want to regress course grade, which is our dependent variable, uh, your y, your dependent variable, against your independent variable, which in this case is the hours of game. And I want to get the data that uh, these two are in from the df, which is the data set I have. And if I run that, I will be ending up with these results here. So this is a model summary of the results. So let's try and interpret the regression table. So the intercept is this one. So this intercept, the beta here is essentially your beta zero or your beta naught. And it is the autonomous value of your course grade when X is zero, when your, uh, when your R's of game is zero. So on the average, um, the person has around 1.760 as their grade. Right? That's their grade. Now. If the person games, okay, if the person games an additional R each day, then it's associated with a higher grade of 0 0.683. So 1.760 plus 0 0.683 is the usual grade or the average grade of a person who games an additional R more. So basically, we can conclude that an extra hour of gaming is associated with an increase of 0 0.683 in the course grade. That's quite a big jump, right? Wouldn't you think? And while you might say, oh, uh, that's, that's probably wrong and that's probably not true. Well, we have yet to see, but at least on this empirical standpoint, this result is highly significant. So notice this, this under the significance column here is 0, 0.00. That's actually the p-value. So we know that if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, which in this case it is, that's 0 0.000, the variable is significant, right? So this 0 0.683 is a significant estimate. So it passes the individual test of significance, right? And you can also see it, of course, with the t-stat, this is much higher than the two that we are typically accustomed to to denote significance. So this is a significant variable, as well as the, inter the intercept is also a significant variable. So the hours of gaming is indeed positive, uh, is indeed a positive contribution to the course grade, as much as people would like to deny that, right? At least, in, at least we find it in this data set, okay, that uh, the hours of gaming is indeed a high contributor to that. Now. Uh, we have here on top model summary, and this will tell you a couple of things. It tells you the R squared, which is 0 0.537, which means that 53.7% of the variation in the course grade was explained by the R's of game. So 53% of that variation conceivably can be explained by the R's of game. 
Okay, and that's quite a big percentage. It's not by any means like the best fit that we will see. We'll see that when we get to multiple regression, but we see quite a good fit here. And we also see us uh, a, a relatively high adjusted R squared. So uh, let's just try to see it with its uh, with the fitted value. So let's save it in a model object and uh, let me do this model one. I'll name it model one. So this is just creating a model object so I can do some plots. Okay, and if I do that, this one, okay, so I, I'm going to put it in a model object, model one, this same thing that I have here in the original command of OLS underscore regress, I'll put that here. In fact, I can also print, uh, so if I type summary model one, that will also show me the results, but a more abridged version of it. So notice it's, it's like roughly the same, it's the same estimate as this one, right? So that's, uh, you see that they're both significant and so on. Now, if I plot this one, this OLS underscore plot underscore obs fit, that will plot this line here that we have. And we can see that the fit is quite good. So that's your actual versus your fitted. And we see that the model fit is quite good. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying that it's not the best fit. We're going to end up getting that in a multiple regression. And likely, I'm, uh, I'm sort of uh, like probably alluding to it now, the model generally face, uh, fails a couple of diagnostics, uh, a couple of um, biases, and is prone to a couple of biases, which we will explore in the next few videos. But for the scope of this video, we are done. Okay, so that's a basic introduction or a simple introduction to a bivariate regression inside of R using OLSRR and your tidyverse package. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for uh, standing by, and I hope that I can see you in the next few videos. Thank you very much.